Welcome, this is GMB Youth Ministry. Uh, today we have a, a special guest here out from DC, Maryland. Um, this is Bestat. Well, he gonna introduce himself even more. Yes. But go on ahead. Take it away, boss. Uh, how you guys doing? Uh, thanks for inviting me. For sure. For having me. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Bestat. I go by Biz. Um, I'm an artist. I do a whole bunch of things. Um, faith and power. Um, one of my things, um, faith and power music, I call it trouble, um, music for the trouble hearted. And it's really, it's gonna come out pretty soon. I'm gonna get y'all. Be on the lookout, people. Yeah. Be on the lookout. I'll make things happen, you know. Yeah. It's all blessed. That's what's up. Yeah. So, um, how old are you? What school do you go to? Were um, you born here? I was born in Ethiopia. Uh, I'm gonna go reverse, my bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm 20 years old. I was born in Ethiopia. And I don't go to school right now. I'm taking a gap year. Actually, took a gap year already, but you know, I, I don't like, yeah, <laughs> one more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, but it's more like I was actually trying to go back to school, but my social security got messed up. Ooh. Yeah, so it's like my, um, so it's funny, like, I swear, like, I'm gonna explain exactly how things ran out, but <laughs> so when I went back to school, like, applied for FAFSA, they rejected me like twice. Ooh. And the main reason is because my names don't match on like the social security and my passports don't match at all oh. and i've been trying to get them to like really look at it and they said i gotta get a name change and that's gonna take like two three months process wow and it's like they don't want me to go back to school and they don't like, want to see you winning bro. yeah <laughs> that's exactly what's happening man but it's all right though you know it's all to god it's god's time and not mine yeah man, i'm just real. here for the ride that's what's know? up that's all it is but it's all good though that's and good. you're saying that you were born here? yeah uh, no, nah, I was born in Ethiopia. I came here when I was nine years old, so I've been here for about ten years now. Oh, that'll be no, no, eleven now. That's nineteen. <laughs> it's been a minute. That's yeah, all it's been a minute. Say. Yeah, yeah, eleven years. Learned a lot. And back home in Ethiopia, I was actually like really faithful and like I was really like different. And when I came here, I like America had a big impact on me. It does, know, like, yeah. You know, especially for like people like migrating from a different place, it's really hard for them to kind of adjust. Yeah. And it's like culture shock, like, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. when you come here, it's very different. And yeah, the environment is different, the people are different, you know, like, it's like, everything is different. Like, I felt like I was an alien here and I just yeah. had to fit in, you know. So, so tell us a little bit more about your health, like, and share your life testimony while you're at it. Yeah, I got you. So, pretty much, I don't know how to start that. <laughs> Uh, the culture shock. Or oh yeah, the culture that's a shock. Good place to start. All right, so okay. pretty much culture shock. So uh, you know how Ethiopia is. You know we're pretty well trained on the Ethiopian like cultural food and jura and all that. Yeah. You know it's pretty good. Like I used to eat a lot of kitfo and a whole bunch of things. So my tradition is gurage. So I I'm pretty like well known for you know mm -hmm. kitfo and all yeah. that. So I'll be doing that. And I came here and it's not like kitfo. So we had burgers and you know what I'm saying French fries and a whole bunch of that and that was their culture. So I tried a cheeseburger and it was like I felt like I just I don't know I didn't like it at first you know yeah because I felt like I was like out of place and I was like yeah I might just stick to my injera and the injera here is not even the same it's anymore. not yeah then it's like then I had to find myself it's like I was like Malcolm in the middle I was like I didn't know where I was gonna go mm -hmm. so I was like yeah so food was different. People were different because you know like when you go to like i first came here at elementary school you know how elementary school is you know just kids having fun and everything like that but if you're new it's like everybody has their own sections everybody has their own crew in a class and everything like that so it's like i didn't have too many ethiopians like kids that are around mm -hmm. so i was like i was just thrown into a class with like a bunch of like a bunch of white people like black folks yeah and a whole bunch of asians and everything like that so it's like i was just there and i was like probably the um, there were like three Ethiopian girls, like, but the other girls, like, they were like girls and like they were pretty hip. And yeah. I was just here, just a foreigner, just chilling. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do, so I was like, yeah, let me kind of figure it out. But I was good at soccer, so like, when it was like time for recess, you know, I would cook them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. What other things, like, were not the same? Like, you said you were faithful in Ethiopia. Yeah. So, and, yeah, faithfulness and everything like that. You know how. American culture, so like, I'm not trying to just. It's say, contradicting. Yeah, it's contradicting. You know, it's pretty like it's pretty different. A kid raised here and a kid raised in Ethiopia is totally two different people. You mm -hmm. know, it's like 
kid raised there, he's like, he knows to go to church on Sundays. You know, he knows how to take care of his mom. Like, he doesn't like, like, I mean, there's going to be like, like clash with the parents and everything like that. But yeah. it's not like it's here. Like they're like they're kids that are rebelling like against parents and everything yeah. like that, and it's like it's pretty, it's pretty different for me because I wasn't like raised in the environment where I was like, I wasn't like our, I'm not gonna say I was raised with my dad and everything like that. See, he was in America before me, mm -hmm. so he was living here and I was in Ethiopia. So like for nine years, I wouldn't see him like probably like three months out of the whole year, probably something like that. Then he would be back here and doing his thing. So I was like. Most of the time, I was kind of gazing out, just trying to see, like, you know, where's he at? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. just imagine it. But as soon as I came here, it's more like I started picking up their habits because I started rebelling against my dad because he wasn't always there. And there's, like, some, you know, family issues and everything like that, too. Mm. So it's like I started picking up their little trends and everything like that. So I started, like, rebelling against my dad. I started, like, cursing at them and mm. everything like that. But I, I was, you. like, always cool with my mom. But, there, you know, there's going to be something like that. Right. Like, yeah. But it's all love, though, at the end of the day. So... I mean, I still love my dad. I still love my mom. I got brothers and sisters, you know. It's different. So, it's one of the things. I get you. Okay, so, um, go ahead and share your life testimony for us. All right. So, recently, like I said, I'm an artist, uh, faith and power. But before that, I was faithful, not mm -hmm. faith and power. Um, so, I had a lot of hopes. I have dreams. I have a lot of things to, like, really want to do in life. And it's always starting with my mom. Like, not starting with my mom. I always started with God. But it was going to, like, it's going to be second step was to, like, to please my mom. You know, I want to take care of her. I want to make sure I get a house for her. I make sure, like, big things. But the way I was going at it was, like, you know how I said about American culture, you know? Right. It's about, you know, what sells for the people. And they said, like, sex sales, lust, and all that. So I was, like, I was in a mindset where if I make music, like, please people, like, you know what I'm saying, what they want to hear about drugs, money, lust, you know, a whole bunch of other things. So I was in that kind of mindset. So I was making music, like, you know, and big influence. I'm not even trying to, like, criticize uh, The weekend or anything like that, but he was a very big influence in my life. Um, the reason I say that is because when I was, like, kid like around middle school and everything like that the weekend started popping mm -hmm. the first ethiopian you know artist yep. is out there so putting us like, on the map yeah. yeah he put us on the map you know what i'm saying he's doing his big things and i'm like yo this man's just like yeah so i had like my heart set out to be like yo, i might be like that i might be like that then started really like listening to the weekend started really like being like not being like the weekend but started picking up like habits or something like that so i was always like writing music and everything like that so that wasn't a problem, but what kind of music I was writing about was started like changing. So I started writing about more about drug abuse, like more about lust, more about a whole bunch of other things that I was just going through, like not going through, but wanted to experience kind of things. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? I was like never cool with like girls or anything like that. So I started like writing songs like for the girl. girlies. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm saying? It's get girls, it's to do all that. But it was like, that was out of the way of like, Faith, you know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. there's faithful and there's like real faith, mm -hmm. and I was just faithful and not really just doing what I needed to do to really be with the faith, and like not like I was contradicting the faith for real. Then I went on like spiritual endeavor, and that kind of sent me back to right track. And this happened recently. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was doing a whole bunch of things before this. I actually had like I, I was with a crew. We were called the crew, and I was part of them. Um, we started coming up. We started doing things. We all started this. Yeah. So. What? <laughs> yeah. Hold up. <laughs> now nah, you good. You good. What is it? So it's a it's a band. It's like it's not even a band. We're oh, just okay, a crew. Okay. We call ourselves the crew because it's um you know we all look for people to fit in with. You know, like we all like look for people to do what I like things with okay. yeah and it might not be the best crowd it might not be the people that you're meant to be with or something like that when i say meant to be with it's like you know there's people like there's like spiritual brothers you know we're in the higher plane we're all brothers and sisters yeah. yeah but here on earth it's like people that you have to like be with to really like go to the places you need to be or they take you to the place you need to be mm -hmm. and that's what i was understanding like i was just with my brothers because they're ethiopian too and we were all doing like we're getting hyped because this music is like really good 
and we were coming up and I was like, yo, this is like, we're about to make it. We're about to make it. And we started meeting people like higher ups in the thing and it was like, yo, this is like really heat. We can do this, da, da, da. So he really started like teaching us like the music trade and everything like that. Then I was going through the whole thing with them. So before all of this, there's this thing, I'm gonna tell you guys about it, but there's the thing, there's like this one significant thing that's gonna hold me back from doing all of this. And this, this, it was God, like part of God's plan. I'm not just saying that because it's a song or anything like that, but it's all part of, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I'm trying to do that, but yeah. you know, it's all part of God's plan. He really pulled me back from something that I kind of would have destroyed myself. You know, we all like, we all create our doom. When I say that is like, we're given a gift, talents, we're all given like, you know, something to really praise the Lord and like bring glory to him. Mm -hmm. And one thing I wasn't doing was really praising him for. I was thanking him because whenever you see me, like I was with my friends and everything like that, I would always talk about like it's somehow I would always bring God into the conversation and really like start praising him. But within my songs, I wasn't really anywhere close to that. Yeah. Like, you know, like there was like there's God mentioned. You know how like nowadays they be like, thank God I made it. Then they yeah. right back like they like, right back doing, to the, yeah. Then we're right back to doing quick whatever. shout out to him yeah. and then yeah. then it's like yeah. That's not even glory for real. That's just. And that's how you were doing it. Yeah, that's how I was doing it. Okay. Then he had a whole plan to really put me back. So yeah, with the crew we were doing really well. Like I can't fake. Like we were close to like about in a year probably we would have made it all of us. Like yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not about what up should have could have or anything like that. But mm -hmm. it's all God's plan. I'm not petty about anything. I'm actually happy where I'm at right now because mm -hmm. I learned a lot. And right. um, it's all lessons before, like blessings. Mm -hmm. I That's like what that. I learned too. And the reason I say that is about two years ago, I was in high school. And you know how I, I talked about the weekend, like he had big influences in me. Like, yeah, so in my life, I started smoking weed to get, like, feel accepted. Mm. And I was like a chubby little kid trying to make it happen, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I would write songs and anything like that, but I was shy. I was like, little I was like clustered kid mm -hmm. I never really talked much I was just on my own thing mm -hmm. and a lot of people didn't know that about me I make music I do all that and I just cool it like God bless me with like so many things I'm thankful for that and um, I play sports sing rap do a whole bunch of things I'm cool with people I like can conversate with a lot of people and, like I have like energy to like for years probably <laughs> so I'm really happy about all of those things and one thing that I didn't know all of this was like, could be activated through God, mm -hmm. you know? It was just, I thought it was just all me. So about a year ago, two years ago, my bad. So I started smoking weed to get accepted because I didn't know all of these were in me, mm -hmm. you know? It was mm -hmm. just, yeah. So I started smoking weed. I started doing a whole bunch of things. And through that, I started like, you know how like when you do start something off, you're having fun, you're doing all that. Yeah. So I started having fun for the longest, like I did it for a year or something. But then I started getting really wild because I would like start smoking in the house because you know how like it kind of deceived me from like the reality that I was living in. Mm -hmm. And my mom's not a big fan of weed, you know how Ethiopian and how the shop parents yeah. are. You know, she started flipping. But then I would kind of try to hide it. Then I was like, yo, I really don't care. Like it's just like something with me just like I really don't care. And I was like, yo, all right. Then I started smoking in the house, started bringing like groups of friends over. I started doing a whole bunch of crazy things, and a lot of people know me for just like wilding out. You know, I used to pull up to the parties. I used to make like I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm make it lit, but I was one of the guys that would make it lit. So I'd be like, yeah, this da 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 da. So I'd be like, all right. So I'd be cool, and I started having like a name, and it was cool. And I used to like sell drugs and everything like that too. So we was like my best friend for a little bit. Then I started getting in life where it's more about weed. And I started like, I didn't even have like a cross on at that time. Yeah, I didn't have a cross on for that time. I was just on my own little thing. Mm -hmm. Then I started having bad trips. Like I felt like I was going to die type thing. Like after a little bit, I was just, something within me was just like changing. And I didn't know what it was at the time. Was just like really tripping then yeah like i felt like i was doing so many wild crazy things and i felt like i was gonna die i felt like i was just really going through it like and i didn't know who to talk to i didn't know like i was like 
during that time I was like 18 or something. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I was like, what, what's going on, bro? Like, yeah, I gotta stop. So I like kinda, there's this guy that always tells me like, he was like the one of the people like I used to like sell with and everything like that. But he used to always tell me, bro, like, you need to stop, you need mm -hmm. to stop. And I'm like, dude, and I'm like, nah, bro. And I'm like, I kinda love this, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love the feeling of it. So I'm like, nah, I'm not stopping. I'm about to keep doing it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel chill, I feel like relaxed, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I cooled out for a little bit. You know, you when you like, within you, something tells you to stop. But yeah. it's like, my body and my mind weren't like, really that strong. My spirit was there to really stop, but my body was weak. And so I promised myself I would only smoke on a Saturday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, would, that didn't go right. So this is where a whole bunch of things happened. On a Saturday, mm -hmm. my friend, I just like literally walked out and came back and I just seen my friend and I was like, yo, what's up? He like, he sells and stuff like that too. So I was like, yo, what's up, bro? And I was like, yo, this is cool, bro. You trying to spark? And I was like, yeah, I got the free crib. But come, came through, um, got in the house. My mom wasn't there at that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And at that time, it was weird. <laughs> I had a bed that's like, that's elevated, like way elevated. Mm -hmm. And and my like, so it was like, there's another bed that's like right next to mine. That's just chilling right here. So he was sitting on that one. I'm like sitting on the elevator bed. Then I took like good four hits and I was out of this world. Like I swear, like, cause I haven't smoked for a little bit, you know, like, oh, so like, so since you only yeah, Saturdays. that's like, it really hit yeah. me. Then I was like, I was too gone. Then my heart started beating fast. And I was like, then I started panicking. I was like, yo, my, what did my mom come to do? And I, like a whole bunch of things started like running my like my mind. Then I went to my sister's room. Then I was like, yo, yo, you got a cologne? And she was like, she was like, she had a spray. It was like it said rocket or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, I grabbed the joint. I just started spraying my whole room. Then <laughs> that was crazy. Then I was like, I was cooling it. The smell really hit me. Like you know, like I sprayed way too much because yeah. I was like panicking and I didn't even know what I was doing for at that moment. <laughs> Cause like I just hit somebody, yeah. yeah. Then I was like, I was there, and I was I just sat down for a little bit, and I elevated bed. I was just thinking. Then I really felt like I was getting sacrificed right there. Like it was, it was <laughs> what? weird. It was weird. I swear, I felt like I gave What's myself like, oh. like I just felt like I just sacrificed like my life. Yeah. Like I was on the elevated bed. It was weird. I mm -hmm. felt like you know how like. um Back in the old times, you know how like they sacrifice people and yeah. stuff. Like they, they put them like in the little, like rock, like big oh, rock. altar and everything. Yeah. yeah. Then it was just I felt like I was just like chilling right there, like cooling. Then I felt like I was about to die right there. Then I started panicking. Then I started getting up and I ran to the living room and we have a big poster of, like Jesus and like Mary and everything like that. Then I was like, yo, I really started praying like I've never prayed before. Yeah. I really like yeah. started praying. I was like, please, like don't let me go. Don't let me go. Then I really started crying, like broke down, like started like tripping. Then, like I see my brother and sister, and he plays this game called Uncharted. I bought yeah. him that game. Yeah. Yo, that game is like it's lit. It's lit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, I bought him like the three, like you know the little Uncharted the, the series. Third, yeah, the third all, one. Yeah, all collection. Yeah. All collection. So he was playing the second one, I believe. And you know how like the second one, there's like this runs like a temple run thing. Those was, creatures, right? Yeah, the yeah, creatures and everything. About. Yeah, so he beat the dude that's like bald and everything. I was trying to go kill him and all that. So he couldn't beat him for the longest. So he beat him that day. And I was like, I felt like that was like one of my um, demons. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I started getting hype and I was like, yo, go do this. Da -da. And I was like, yeah. Then I felt like I attached my life as Nathan. Like as Nathan, yeah. like Drake, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, I really attached myself to that dude. And I was like, cause he was fighting all of the spirits, demons and everything like that. You know, yeah. like it was just crazy. And I felt like I was in there and I felt like I was attached to the game or something like that. But then that was like, that's that's my life. Like, you know, life is like a game to me. Like I just, I really just thinking like this, like, like my life is a game or something like that. Then I really like, I prayed and all that before, like before. So I felt like my brother was playing me <laughs> in the game. Oh. Then I was like, I'm about to get saved. I'm about to get saved and all that. But he started. He kept on dying. <laughs> and I was like, bro, some butt. And I was like, yeah, this is not happening, right? And then he's like, then this guy came. He's a big video gamer. Like, he's my man. He came through. And he was like, I can beat this. 
And I was like, yo, you my guardian angel, bro. <laughs> and I started doing the whole thing. Then he started playing, and he started beating the whole game. He, like, he passed through it. Then after he did, and I started, like, really breaking down, like, started breaking down. Started, my heart kind of calmed down for a little bit. But then it still, I felt, I still felt that unease in my heart. Then I was like, I got to pray and everything. So I went to, like, Mary real quick. And I was like, yo, please, I would, like, be the person you want me to be, like, for real, for real. Because, like... I've been a bad brother. I've been like, I used to kind of hit my brother. And then I went back to like Jesus because he like, he's the true savior. Mm. And I started like really praying, praying like on my knees. I started crying, Lord, I'll be who you want me to be. Like for my brother, for my mom, for my dad, for like my sisters and all that. Like I want to take care of everything. And ever since then, I felt like I was progressing. And I, I like made a promise to my brother and my sisters. Like, and I was like, yo, I'm about to quit smoking. And I gave him that. It's like, you know, it's like when you swap something, like for a trading thing, mm-hmm. like, yeah, basically, like, my mind, my spirit kind of did a trading, like, quit weed, we give you back your life. And I was like, all right. Then, like, that's what I felt. So I quit weed for the longest, for like a year or something. Actually, nine months. Nine months or something like that. But then throughout the nine months, I was I was like still in high school, so yeah, like you true. know there's some the like influences, yeah. temptations, uh-huh. and all that, and I was weak. And for the nine months, I was like solo, like I was not like really like like rocking with people. I started playing football, I started doing a whole bunch of things, and I was really good. I was losing like started gaining weight again, so I was like, <laughs> cooling. Then I was just chilling. But after nine months, like throughout the time. I started picking up like other drugs, like mm. not just like weed or anything like that. I started doing Zans. I started doing like a little bit of other thing. Then, but I made a promise I wouldn't smoke, so I was like chilling. So you said that since it's not smoking, it's yeah, okay. it's okay. Mm. Like my mind is like, you know what I'm saying? Just being young and dumb. I really haven't read like the Bible. I haven't read anything like serious. I know what the faith is, mm-hmm. but I really didn't know what really meant because I never broke it down mm-hmm. to really understand it. Or actually went in debt through actually like yeah but all i know is i got saved by jesus and i was grateful and i got saved and i was like yeah i'm happy i'm good i'm safe then time goes on i went into zans zans is like the newest things you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like they they're really wild they like they're bad and wild <laughs> and i didn't know at this time because i was just cooling and I was working at Papa John's, and I used to make yeah pizza. I make great, I make great pizza, so I was telling, <laughs> yeah. So I was just cooling. I was doing my thing, you know. I got a little money, so I was like, "Yo, bro, give me like how many zans did I get? I got like twenty zans or something for like the low." So I was just chilling. Got them. I got them in the little Advil bag, and I was like in a pill bottle. Put them in my room. So whenever I need to like make music or something like that, I used to make music at that time too. So whenever I was making music and everything like that, I was just pop a sand or something like that for relax. Then I was just like really do my thing. Then as time goes on, there's like parties and everything like that. You know, it's almost the end of year school. So it's like, yeah, a lot of things changing. After that, pop is like that day party and my man's had a concert or something like that. His name is Seamus. Um, it's like Frail Boys, they're really good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they're doing their own thing. Uh, it's like a little shout out, but yeah, Sound good. no matter. But um, I went to their concert, and my man, I was with my man named Jorge. Uh, yeah, he, I've been talking to him a couple times. I pray for you, bro. And I was at a part. I went to a party with him, and we just linked up. And this man just picked us up. I felt this was like the weirdest, like, yeah, scenario. So like, I was with Jorge. He just went there. Then I had Zans in my bag, like in my like jacket, and I, I was like, yo, I'm about to go to a party. We lit. Popped two Zans that day. Went to the party. Then that day, somehow, somehow, I smoked. Really? Yeah, like I smoked. Like I swear, I don't even remember that night. Like mm. the whole night, I don't even remember it. But all my man, like my man told me, he was like, bruh, you were smoking. I was like, like I really started tweaking. I was like, bruh, no, like, you're lying, right? You know, like I started like really telling, like, I was like, yo, bro, you, you're welling. Like, I said, it's not happening. Then he's like, bro, you smoke, bro. You like, you were hitting gravity bombs. Like, you know, like gravity bombs, you guys don't know it, but I'm being a bad influence, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you got so many crazy things. It's all good. Yeah, but gravity bombs, like, 
put the weed on the like top and just like water and it's like you pick it up and it's crazy stuff and so they were doing that and it's like a lot more concentrated than actually like J like you know like it's, it's a lot more it's like THC flows everything like that it's crazy so I hit that then I like I don't remember that night but they saying that I hit that and I was like all right I did not happen because I was off two Zans. I like I really like you black out off two Zans. Like that's some crazy stuff. Then the morning, the day after we had school, I still came to school. I showed up. Then I asked the dude like I smoke. And he was like, bro, you smoke? And I was like, whoa, bro, this is trippy. Like I'm really started like thinking like yo. Then I felt like I had an approval or something like that because I was I smoked that one time. But you're so alive. Yeah. Then I felt like. Like, is this real? Like, you know what I'm saying? I smoke, but nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I feel like God's not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. God didn't watch it or something like that. So I was like, or nothing's gonna happen if I smoke. Or like, it was just like all in my head. And I started like just contemplating a whole bunch of things. Then I started picking up smoking after a little bit. Cause I felt like, like there was no consequence to it. You know, I was just like, Nothing happened. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm good. So I'm like, bad. And I started smoking back. And I was like, I was really good at smoking too. Like, I'm just like an addict. Like, when I started doing something, I'm like an addict. I get in tune. It's over. So it's like, I started smoking. I'm like, back to my regular status. I'm like, smoking like two, three times a day, doing some crazy stuff. And, but I wouldn't do Zans anymore. I would just kind of drink at parties. I'm not a big drinker or anything like that. And, just cooling, but smoking is like more one of my like that's my poison type thing. Mm -hmm. So this whole time with the crew and everything, that's how we came together. I was smoking. So now this is where it's going to get interesting. So as I was doing like you know I was faithful, but I wasn't like faith and power because I like I had I had this promise to God that I really just broke, yeah. and I was building like this empire with the crew. And after a little bit. What happened was I started feeling energies like within me, like, and it's like it told me to kind of like quit smoking, quit smoke, quit smoking. And I was like, but you know, like at, at one point, you like once you're in it, you can't you to like it's hard to deep, get out. Too deep, it's in too deep in it. Deep in it. And like people say that, like when I was starting, bro, like once you quit and come back, bro, it's like it's hard to get out. Yeah. Like and people were saying that, and I was like, bro, I can always quit, bro. You see me, I did it, bro. I was like, mm -hmm. I didn't. I just I stopped smoking for like nine months. And I'm yeah. like. I think I can do it, but it's like, it's not a problem. But then I really seen that's a problem, like, for real, for because at that point, I was just an addict. Like, I would smoke. Now I'm smoking, like, I got I had a job at LA Fitness, like, I quit that job, like, during the time. But I work at LA Fitness still. But before my whole journey, I used to work at LA Fitness, and I used to make, like, a lot of money. I'm not gonna say the number. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. but, I made a lot of money, so I used to cop like a half almost like every other day type thing. Oh. So all of that would be gone. Just smoking. Just smoking. Just smoking. Just smoking. Just smoking. And I did not save up. I did not do anything. Just smoke, 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 smoke. Through the crew and everything like that, we started like doing music. And they he got me like, uh, my man's alias, he like introduced me to this guy named Priest and everything like that. He's pretty big in the business, make like music business. Like, he put me on type thing. And I'm like, bro, this is like really about to do good things. You know what I'm saying? So we started chilling. And throughout that process, you know, like I told you, but my energy started changing. Like I wasn't having bad trips, but my spirit was kind of pulling me back into the life where I was living where without the weed, without anything. Cause I feel like I needed that. And, or something new that it was gonna happen to me. So I was like, all right. Then he started pulling me back, pulling me back. But then I was like, stop smoking. And I stopped smoking like once a day. Mm -hmm. From like, I went from like three days to like one day, one a day. And I was just kind of slow down dramatically. Then out of nowhere, I felt like I killed my brother. Like I smoked that one time at, like, at my, my friend's priest's house. And I felt like I killed my brother. And I felt like I started panicking. I really like felt energies like within me. And I just like, did I do this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like hard to go back. But I feel like I killed my brother and it's like, this is deep. You know, like, I felt like there was no punishment during that time. And I was just cooling. And I was like, and before that, I was having like arguments with my mom. Like, mom, I, like, I love weed. 
And she was telling me, like, it's hurting me. Like, it's, it's weird. She was telling me, like, it's hurting me. It's hurting me to stop. And it's I felt like, hurt. yeah, she's saying it's hurting me. Like, I didn't know it at the time because my behavior and everything like that affects, like, her and everything mm-hmm. like that, too. But I was taking it as in, like, God was punishing me through her. And I was like, mom, is it hurting you? Like, where does it hurt? And I, I really took it literally. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I'm tripping. Like, I'm all over the place. And I'm like, where is it hurting you? Because I love weed, mom. Like, I... You know, I told you about, I, was, I said it's going to be easy to quit. Mm-hmm. Nah, like, I was really attached to it. Like, I was in I was in it way too deep. And I'm like, where's it hurting you, mom? Like, I really started doing all of that. And... It wasn't hurting her, like, literally, but it was mentally, like, having effects on her. Because, like... It's hard to see somebody you love go through pain, mm. you know, and I just, I just caused my brother death. Like, I just, like, I just caused my brother death. That's why I was like, I was just in the room. Like, I was really like tripping because I felt like I killed my brother. I killed my sister and I just like, I'm just in the room, just like panicking. Like, did I do this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because all of the love, like, of like weed, you know what I'm saying? Such a like a material object that made me cause like. I made me lose my brother and sister. And I'm like, then I really had to evaluate myself. Then I was like, yo, this is really wild. This is really trippy. I'm not really experiencing this. Like, I'm not, I don't want this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I had, I, I was, my mom gave me $50 that day and she had eye surgery that day, the same day. It's crazy. Like a whole bunch of serious events. Like I'm trying to like, I was like, it's too deep for you guys to yeah. like, really go through it. But I'm just telling you guys the highlights of it. Yeah. So that day she gave me fifty dollars so she said like do whatever you want and she gave me an extra fifty dollars she was like for food and whatever you want and i'm like bet so i used the fifty dollars for an eight the other fifty i had it like i had spent it on something but then i gave the gave him fifty dollars got the eighth then i was like as soon as i hit a j i finished it tripped out then that's when everything happened then i'm like yo i'm not here i'm not here i need to go i need to leave and they're like telling me, don't panic, don't panic. And I'm like, bruh, no. Yeah, like, yeah, they're like my friends. I'm like, don't panic, don't panic. I'm like, bruh, no. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not having this. So I'm like, I need to go home. And I like picked up my phone, I called my sister. I'm like, yo, yo, check my brother, check my brother. And I'm like, yeah, and then check our brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, in the moment. So I'm like, check my brother, check my brother. And she's like, I'm not home, I'm literally outside. Is that everything okay? And I'm like, then my heart hit me like something took over me and he's like i think i think they knew like I, I feel like i feel like my spirit knew that i was gonna make her panic mm-hmm. then i had myself collected in a second i was like whoa hey uh don't worry like i'm good like, it was some funny stuff like <laughs> i swear like I, I became like a different person like i was just like yo don't worry i'm good um just when you go home check on him text me you know you're good right yeah i bet, bet. she's like okay <laughs> she left <laughs> i like our bet then as soon as I hung up, I am started panicking again. I started going back to it. I was like, yo, like, this is not fun. Then I was like, I threw the eighth. Like, I just, I just threw the eighth. And I was like, yo, I don't want this, bro. Like, I don't want this life, man. Like, I really been in some, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't want this. And I started, like, reminiscing about a whole bunch of things. And my man that gave me a ride. He was like, bro, like, all right, okay, let's do this. All right, then. Then some tell me, you know, like, we always get two chances. But that was my second chance because I really already ruined my first one. That was my second one. And I'm like, yo, because I like I smoked twice, like type thing. And I'm like, this is trippy, bro. And I'm like, and I started like, really like my heart was broken. I was like crying like all the way home and all that. But during that time, uh, your guy priest was there. He was like talking to me. He's pretty wise. He's like pretty old. Like not saying pretty old, but it's pretty mm-hmm. like okay. yeah. so. He was talking to me, he was like, you know, God is good. And then he started like telling me things and I'm like, all right, good. My heart started like chilling for a little bit, chilling for a little bit. But on the way back home, I was right back into that same room where my heart was beating fast and I was tripping. Oh, so when he was talking to you about God and stuff, yeah. like, you were calm? Yeah, I was calm. Then- but then it was like, when I was by myself, like I had no guidance or anything, so I'm like, panicking everywhere you know what i'm saying like i felt like something was wrong something was off i upset up spirit something like that so i ups- i did upset the spirit yeah yeah so it's like he was really bad like he just kind of was punishing me like he was like yeah bro it's not happening like he's gone like he was that's what like in my mind that's what like 
telling me like he's gone you that the yeah yeah like yeah like my brother's gone my sister's gone like my spirit's not there i'm just about to just i'm just like i'm just i'm going there like i'm bound to go to hell like just poop and i'm like Damn. then when i got home first thing i do i, I kiss my mom like every time i come in so mm-hmm. like kiss my mom i act calm and i ran to my brother's room checked on him he's sleeping so I felt like his spirit just left, you know what I'm saying? Like he was sleeping already. So like, I felt like his spirit was gone. Then I was like, you know how like you check a dead person when you like do that little thing? Yeah. I pulled up to him and I was like, oh, he's still breathing. I was like, thank God. Then I started like, I felt like it was not like, yo, I, this is like a movie or something. <laughs> so I was like cooling. And I had to check my my sister too. And they both good. And I'm like, thank God. Then I was in, I was in the living room. I really like, you know how I told you guys, there's like big poster, like Jesus, and Mary, yeah, and everything. Yeah. So I really started praying. Like, I really started praying like crazy. And that was like a lot more than I did before. Cause I like really seen the punishment that could be like given to people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, and this is like really wild. I can't lose my brother, I can't lose my sister. And I'm like, I didn't even know what to say. I just started breaking down. Mm. Cause like I already said a whole bunch of things before. And it's like, something told me, bro, like, I mean, if I make the promise I can't keep, it's like, what's the point, mm-hmm. you know? But my heart was saying, like, my heart was saying just, like, I was just saying, my mind, like, my mind's just, like, running, so I'm just saying things. So, and I was like, yo, what am I, like, I don't know what to say, and I'm just saying things, but really, like, I had no recollection of what I was saying like I was just not sure what I'm doing I'm just like praying 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 I'm not even sure how to pray at that point but I know like oh like our father would love yeah like yeah all that so I'm just praying 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 but like I feel like I'm not going anywhere so I was like I've been crying I've been crying I've been crying I've been crying I was like I just if you see me that whole week like I swear you would not think like I'm the same guy so like I'm just crying crying I go to my bedroom I'm like it's hard to sleep now it's like I'm going through some crazy stuff. My friends trying to link up, make music. I'm like, bro, not me. I'm not even doing that for anymore. Like, I'm just on my own things, bro. And sometimes I'll be like, try to like be go back to the regular life because my brother's still alive. Like, he's still alive. So I'm like, he blessed me, but I'm not sure how to repay. Yeah. You know, like so I'm like, yeah, bro. Then I would kind of be like. All right, I'm just, he's good, he's good. So I'll go back out to make music with them. So we make music in the car. And I was with them. And I'm just in the car, like, just like thinking about my brother the whole time, thinking about God, thinking about like all of this crazy stuff. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I'm trying to make music, but it's like, my mind is not here to make music. Yeah. And I'm like, I would just be like, bro, I'm not feeling it, but let me just go home. All right, bet. Took me home, be chilling, be like, be good, bro. Da, da, da. God bless you, dog. He leaves, and I'll be like, in my house. Then I had a um, Holy Communion, like, communion? communion? Communion. Yeah, communion, bro. I always never know how to say that. That's crazy. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. So, yeah, I had that book. Somehow it was in my, like, tra- like not in my dresser, but it's like, there's this little. Um, I'm just calling it dresser for real. So I put it right there. I'm going to leave it. And I'm like, I leave and come back, leave and come back every time I do that. But this, like, somehow I find that it's like a book. And it's, it's right there. And I'm like, I think I'm supposed to read this. And I'm like, picked it up, started reading it. It's like a guidance for like little kids type thing. So it's like, I started reading it. Then I'm like, now I'm really seeing glories of Jesus. Like, he like, you know how the wind and like, like winds like water and everything obey him and how you can like calm the storm it's like one word like you know what i'm saying like i started reading that I started seeing like how he was like speaking to the people like he's like he was like the man like really not the man but he like son of god that really was like given to us to really save us through all, everything yeah. and he really was like I, you know how i prayed to him and everything so i'm like jesus please like i know you do all miracles like you perform all of these things then then I started reading it. Then they had a chapter on Peter. And this is where it really hit me. Like I was supposed to do. So that whole time, 
I was trying to figure out like how I can how can I repay you? Like this is what I'm saying. Like I don't know what to do. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I'm just here sitting down. Then he said, he said to Peter, he was on the boat. He told him to cast his like net down mm-hmm. here and kind of like like lift back. Then he was like full of like you know what I'm saying. But they were they went to like fish the whole day, but they didn't catch anything. But as soon as he came, they were like all of these fishes and all that, and they like all the glory. You know what I'm saying? But then he said to Peter. I can teach you how to be a fisher of men. And I'm like, fisher of men? I'm like, but how? But then they became like his disciples. Like, it's like the people that went around and like taught after Jesus left. And I'm like, then I really started like figuring out, I started putting like puzzle pieces together. And then I felt like my life was a puzzle. And I was like, started p- picking up all the pieces that I was given and everything like that. All right, what am I good at? I make music, da, 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 da. All right, I'm about to start making like worship music. All right, bet, let me change that up. I started doing this. Then I started like having the craziest things. And I like, my journey started like there. Then I was like, all right, I need to clean myself up. I need to get baptized again. So I went to like this uh, DC church, this like St. Mary. Um, they have like this little baptized like, program. Yeah. And I have this almost every day. Like, so they had it from Monday to like Thursday, Friday, like that. So I went for three weeks, not three weeks, two weeks straight. From Monday to Thursday. Then I really just felt good. Like I felt like I was a whole new person. Then, like I was still troubled though. I was still troubled, but it wasn't like it wasn't a problem. You couldn't see it anymore because I was making music to really bless, really doing so many things. And one of the things that really hit me was. I was listening, my mom was listening, my mom always blasted like Christian music in there, like in my house. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, this was during the time, yeah, so this is during before like the baptism and everything like that. So I was really just chilling in the house and I just woke up. I always had my morning tea, and my bread and everything. So I woke up, I was walking. Then there's like this flow of energy within me now and I felt like my spirit was back. But then, every time I go to sleep, I would see dreams, like some scary dreams, like some wild, wild, scary dreams. And I seen a baby die, die in my hands. I seen like, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. But like, yeah. Baptism, yeah, but. the whole baptism and everything like that. And I started seeing dreams. I started seeing like, yeah. Then I felt like every time I seen, like when I seen the baby die, like die in my hand, I felt like, I, like that's when I knew I confirmed it. I was like, yo, that's my brother right there. Cause I saved him. Like I was trying to save him. You know how like you do a little CPR for a little yeah. baby? Yeah. yeah. So I was like trying to do that, but I was like killing him. <laughs> so that was like, I really, that was really wild. Then I really started like, calming myself down because like I would still be on east because like, it was like you know how you have like spirits within you trying to communicate with you and stuff like that so they communicate like I feel like mine were trying to communicate through my dreams so I still have dreams and everything like that a whole bunch of things and I was just going through it then out the cut I started like going to like I really wanted to take like uh, Holy Communion can you say it again? Communion yeah Communion alright <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that I really needed it because I felt like I need to have like I read the whole thing instead of a piece of like you know what I'm saying his blood and his skin like it's just basically I need to have it in me because I really need to get connected with God again and, like Jesus was like really my savior so I was like yeah I need to really like yeah praise so I went to church and the um, <laughs> the pastor is actually the person who baptized me when I was a baby like when I was a kid and I was born in Ethiopia so it's like it's pretty deep then here came back and my communion was with him and i did my confession with him and i did everything and i'm like after all of that my mom told me you know he's the same guy that came and like baptized you when you were a baby he came to your house and i was like i'm really tripping i'm like really like this is real she was like yeah like he's the guy that did that for you and i said he came to our house and i'm like mom this is deep like, you don't understand what this really means with for me you know what i'm saying like i'm just going through so many crazy journeys and i started having dreams of people dreams of, like so many things and this whole like started unraveling to me like for real for real because i'm like you know how i told you guys i make music for trouble harder people and everything like that and i really seen like 
dreams where I was just working on music. I was really working on music, like with like this guy that I had like been working with already, but like it kind of confirmed it. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like I'm really seeing these things. And I was like, these like God's promises kind of things. I'm like really taking it that. And you know how like um, Joshua had a dream and everything like that. He was like, yeah. So I started having dreams about those kind of things. I'm like, yo, just like, is this real? And I really started like going to like Bible study and everything. It's like confirming it. And I'm like, yo. But I'm an impatient guy, so I'll be thinking like everything is gonna come quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm like learning how to like really self manage, self do things, you know. So yeah, so that's one of the things I'm working on, and still need to. I feel like I'm gonna work on that for years, like years to come. Right. So you know, nobody's perfect, and you know, I had desires of so many different things, but. All of those went away, and I just like really detached myself from all earth things. Like, like I don't even go on, like I mean I go on social media and like post some things because, like there was a period of time I swear I posted only like God's words, and I was posting like God's picture and speaking like I'd, like write like the paragraph of His glory. Like you know what I'm saying? Because like anywhere we go, I feel like we can affect people in a positive mm -hmm. manner, and not a, like not everybody takes it their own way. Because like there's like there's like a whole bunch of things I can like talk about, but. I'm gonna just say this one because this I say this to a lot of people. You know, good soil always bears fruit. Rock, it's just gonna stay a rock and it's gonna dry up and just stay there. You know, thorns probably just choke up the word and just like just be gone. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was his soil. Like I was, I feel like a good soil because I feel like I everybody has to perceive that they're a good soil to really bear the fruit. And God knows our hearts and he knows when we're listening but he knows when you're not you know so he communicates with us and my dream like I've had so many communications with him I'm not just saying like yeah I just communicate with him but don't seek signs you're not going to receive mm -hmm. and so I just wait my time he knows when to show up he knows when to leave but one of the times that I really like he really had to show up was <laughs> All right, so it's crazy. Yeah, basically Sunday Easter night was coming. Then I went to I went to pray. I went to pray, and I'm just say God bless before I started. I went to pray, but you know my heart was like, Yo, what if this is like a myth? Like you know how like people be saying like creating stories and stuff like that. I was like. Yeah. My heart was asking that, like, I knew, I was like, stop, shut up. Like, I started, to, I, th I kind of talked to myself sometimes, yeah. like, yeah, this is it. Like, oh, like, just, all this stuff yeah, is you know, this is fake. Yeah. Like, just people made this up just to, like, give us hope and, like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. And I'm like, I really prayed. And I was like, shut up, bro. This doesn't, like, this is real, very real, bro. You, you brothers just got saved, bro. And I'm like, yeah. talk, telling myself this, and I'm like, all right, bro. I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, you're going to get mad at me or something like that. And I went to sleep that night, and... All I remember was before I woke up, all I seen was Jesus, and he was wearing all white, and he came to me like this. And ever since then, I've never doubted, I've never said anything, like, so I try to, like, not stay out of my way to really, like, he shows me so many things, and, like, I really believe he's here, he, like, he's real, he's here, he's really watching us, he's... Yeah, it just got intense right there, but it's very real, and... If you have any doubts in your like, heart, your mind, or anything like that, just know he's he knows it. And don't try to fool yourself knowing that he doesn't like, you know what I'm saying? It's like what you do in the dark is gonna show in the light. And one thing I said in my like lyrics is, would you act the same in the light as you do in the dark? You know? Like, what would you do like would you do the opposite? Like, would you act the same in the dark as you do in the light? Like, it doesn't go. You're supposed to act the same as you would in God, you know what I'm saying? So I wasn't doing that at the time, but whew, but he really showed me that he's real, and I can't get any like I can't. Get, I'm not even trying to make this up. I was trying to say like I'm just you know what I'm saying. But I, I really seen him in all white just come to me and like really just I couldn't my like I couldn't even say anything or anything. like I couldn't even talk, move or anything. All I seen was just he was just there, and it was crazy. And my life, my life has been changed since then. And, yeah, and 
that's that's where I'm at right now. I mean, I really know my purpose. Not a lot of us know our purpose, but I really know my purpose. I know what I have to do. I know, I don't know how to do it. I'm still learning, mm -hmm. but it's all everybody is. You know, a lot of us ask about what's our purpose and give up. But you, you seek and you receive. And I seek, I receive, and I found the light. And and I have to share the light with everybody. He brought me here, and when they brought me this opportunity, I really was like, I really had to jump on it. I was like, yo, I really want to talk about this, cause you know everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Nothing is like, nothing doesn't go by without God's permission. I mean, we can choose. We have free will, and we confuse that for like freedom, but it's it's all in God's will. He has a way to bring us all back. Are we like too ignorant, or are we like too like? not listening or anything like that to really go back to his ways because his life is really like our life really matters to him he loves us we're his creations and you can tell me like science made this da 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 big bang bro like all of that but at the end of the day there's god higher plane a higher place he's really he's really watching us and it's like what are we doing to really like bring glory like what are we doing to really affect people in the ways because nowadays our generation is so crazy like it's messed up it's not even we call it culture but it's not culture but this is just yeah. this is just savagery it's just like, i swear it's not it's not fun we're claiming we're savages that's horrible bro like i'm not saying like i'm not trying to diss anybody or anything but i'm just saying like we're not living the life that we should be living like, you know we're not not all of us not all of us are going to get to see the kingdom of heaven, like, you know, God's kingdom. And that he he made it for us, but we're not going to be able to see it. And that's like, that's saddening to me because I was one of those kids. I was not going to see it, but he had a plan for me. He had things. He, had, he showed me things that I was doing. And I even asked him, like, a lot of you guys can ask him, like, be like, what is, what is my sin? And he will show you. And this lady told me to ask him. And it was literally, he showed me that I was smoking weed. I asked him, like, what's my sin? What did I do? And he mm -hmm. literally showed me that I was smoking weed. Yeah. And I was just, yeah. And it's life. I mean, I understand, like, a lot of us go through things. A lot of us don't know where we fit, where we are accepted. But in God's kingdom, we're all accepted. And a lot of people are giving gifts. A lot of people are just here to just talk. A lot of people are here just to teach a lot of people are here to really share their testimony a lot of people are here like we're all given things to share but it's in god's name not our name mm -hmm. not glory to us at the end of the day we can't keep anything that we we've done here mm -hmm. you know the only thing we could take is like what have you done to bring the god glory and that's the way that's your like that's your entrance to the like kingdom type thing you know that is it that's the entrance i might even try to lie to you guys like, just live with love, live with happy, like, just, yeah. And that's all I got to say. When it gets right, that's when I know I did the right thing. <laughs> I swear. That's life. Man, you said a lot of good things, man. Like, you topped it off really good, but um, I want things to come out of your mouth. I want to clarify some things with you, yep. with what you said, because that was a lot of, of knowledge I right did, there. I just talked for, like, long with my bag. Don't <laughs> even trip, man. Um, Leave the editing to me, so. <laughs> hey, um, you good, you good. I know I'm giving you a hard task, but God loves you. <laughs> <laughs>
We're beautiful. Everybody's beautiful. I truly believe that. And we all have intriguing minds. And me, like, our, I have so many thoughts running through my head. And I also heard, like, you know, there's like 10,000 thoughts within like a minute or something like that when people think. Yeah. And it's hard to not think about wild, crazy stuff. And we don't know where, it was, where it's coming from or anything like that. But we're all giving thoughts through God. We just, we think we're like thinking, but it's just thoughts from our spirits. And we just choose which one we want. But you know, like we all have different kinds of spirits, like good and bad within us, mm. you know? So like someone to the flesh, I'm gonna start with the, with the flesh. Cause it's like earthly desires. Like, um, like I said, I used to make songs just to feel, just for women and everything like that. That's someone to the flesh. Cause that's not coming from a place of God. Mm. Like, you know, he said like, like love everybody equally like just share my glory like really like i'm because i was really doing it to really glorify myself and i'm like yeah he's cool like i wanted to get accepted by the girls and i just wanted to do like all of that i'm gonna get a couple girls the phone number and like the fame status you yeah. know what i'm saying that's yeah. my flesh that wants it like i want the status i want the power i want the glory for it but when it's coming like to the flesh you know we all have desires i can't can't lie to you i've had desires like i kind of i'm i still have desires but i like i know how to conserve myself i know how to maintain i know how to like really draw the line yeah. yeah and i'm like i have thoughts like i have thoughts about like wild crazy thoughts and i'll be like really upset with it i'll be praying for it i'll be really doing some other stuff for it and all of those like things that i feel like is bad it's like it's all in the bible you know if you know like the Ten Commandments, if you know all of the things that God's like been teaching, all of the blasphemy, all of this like crazy stuff, and if you really know what His words are, then you will really understand what your like, what your flesh is like wants, and you would understand what your spirit wants. It's like time with God, and that's someone to the spirit. When we pray, we're like really someone to the spirit, like to like someone, yeah, someone, someone to the spirit. And when we actually like sing hallelujah, we, we like praising the Lord for his glory, for everything he's done for us, like giving his only son to like, you know, save us all for like all of like all salvation. It's like that's that's where it's that's where it's at. That's like that's someone to the spirit, that's like praising God, praising like, you know what I'm saying, Jesus, praising like Mary and everything like that, all of those things. And when we when we go out of our way and really share the blessings with people. You know, like, a person could be hurting. And you know, like, being a good Samaritan, like a person that's going out of their way to really help people. Like, when you say, like, I see a person, like, you know how um, Jesus asked somebody, it's like, there's a priest that walked by, like, somebody that was hurt on the floor. There's a guy that's, like, rich guy that just walked away from the floor. And there's a guy that had nothing. And he literally picked him up, gave him what he had, and he literally was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like that's like a person that's like really helping out to really benefit with God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because God uses us. He knows where we at. He knows where we're at exactly. Mm -hmm. He knows what we're doing. But He still will test us to really see if we're good or not. You know, that's someone to the spirit and it's someone to the flesh. I don't have it perfectly down because I'm still learning. Yeah. But that's that's why I feel like yeah. Give me some room to grow. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that's dope. Mm -hmm. Next, I want to ask is, will God give you the desires of your heart according to His will? Like, yeah, I believe that. I believe that He will. And the only reason I say that is, not everybody has good hearted. But there are people that come from like godly place, people that are being guided. You know, when uh, when Jesus said, uh, people of little faith if you ask me to move mountains literally you can't you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but it has to come from a place of like understanding and like faith understanding truth understanding like who god is his mm -hmm. power is limitless like you know and what we ask of him is like i'm not gonna ask him for like a million dollars and be like yo that's what I need. But he knows what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. At the end of the day, he's going to see all the scenarios and all of that thing. Like, yeah. yeah. no. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's not going to say, yeah, no. But, yeah. you know, it's just not going to happen. But if we ask him for, like, something realistic, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for people that are in pain, like, yo. Anything. I really don't want to yeah. see them suffer. I don't yeah. really want to see this happening. I really pray for almost everybody, like, 
when I pray, I really include all my friends, my people, like everybody that's around me. And I say my friends and family, people all around the world that's hurting. You know what I'm saying? Like I try to include everybody because that's some like that's something that I understand that we have to come from a place and we have to have faith and we have to know that how this power is so like I can't even put it like I can't even put a word on it because it's like it's real. But you know, we just have to make sure we know his power is truly great. Mm-hmm. And we can ask him for almost anything because you just have to ask and pray for it and understand that he is he's willing to give it to us. But you just have to ask. And we just have to have the right heart mm. when we ask. Yeah. We can't be petty, we can't be asking for like we just received a little bit. Miracles are miracles at the end of the day. Mm. You know, God is gonna bless us, but how much of the blessings can we bear? You know, how much are we going to, like, are we going to abuse it? Are we going to, like, are we going to use it for the greater good? Yeah. Are we just going to just ask for, you know, stupid things? Just, like, I need a car. Because that's my selfish reason. Like, I, I mean, I pray for a car, but I'm going to work for a car. You know, I pray and I'm going to work. Like, Faith that works is dead. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. And that's what I learned. Like, one of my friends said, his name is Jonathan. I read his caption. That joke, that's so real. He said, we're the type to pray, then go get it. And I was like, yo, that's real. Because, you know, like a lot of us just pray and we just sit down on the TV just watching it. Like, you know, the like, newest movie that yeah. came out, but we still paying the people to, like, watch it in the movies. I'd be like, bro, that, just, that does not make sense. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you got to make sure you're working with God because he's going to give you what you need, but you got to make sure you're working with him, have the right heart, have the right mindset, mm-hmm. and everything's good. And you can move mountain top if you want to do it. If it's in the way, it's in the way. <laughs> you know, you just gotta ask for it. Yeah. Um. Ask the fourth one or the fifth one. All right, which one? Or do you want to do the fifth one? Be like, cause he said, I know my purpose, so just go off of that. Be like, you talk to them about your purpose for this. So you talked about your purpose earlier. Um, how do you tell the difference between a desire and God's calling in your life? Well, that's All right. So um, God's purpose and desires. You know, we all have desires. We all have. We all have wants, needs. We all like. We're needy creatures too. Mm-hmm. And we all want everything now, but there's. You know how like you were talking about patience and everything. I'm still working on that. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I have to say is, you know, I have desires to really be someone great in God's name, mm-hmm. not just my name. My name might be known for this earth, but at the end of the day, I'm going to make sure I, God overshadows my name. You know, a lot of people would try to claim like an artist is greater than like the person. You know, like some people praise artists more than they praise God. Yeah. So like I'm gonna make sure whenever I do like whatever wherever I go, like he knows my heart. So it's like I'm not trying to say he knows my heart and just base it off that. But he knows where I'm at and he knows where I'm going. He knows like every single thing that I'm trying to do. And I'm not trying to step out of the boundary of like God's words and God's ways and God anything like that. You know. So my desires are aligned with God. And that's why I feel like I know my purpose because a lot of people, I'm trying to guide people back to God. <laughs> like, that's my only purpose. And I'm not trying to lie to you guys and stay here and, like, be, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a great artist. I'm, that's my purpose. I'm going to be an artist. But what kind of artist are you going to be? Like, you're not doing anything. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I'm, like, taking time to really work. I'm really trying to take time to really manifest, like, a whole bunch of things that I need to do. I'm, like, before I do like my music and everything like that, before like before um, I was making music just to do it, just like just for my own reasons, I never prayed. Like I never like you know what I'm saying. I never put a cross my foot. Like yeah, I never like took anything like that before my music. But now before I make it, I'm like yo, do a like, little yeah, a little prayer real quick, and I'd be like yeah, I need to I need to make this happen. So yeah, yeah, you know like this is for you. So just make sure you do it. Cause one time it's hilarious. It's hilarious. I try to make a song based off my desire. It did not go like an inch. Like I swear it did not 
nothing. It did not go anywhere. As soon as I started recording, my mic started acting up. My voice started squeaking. Like, bro, it was crazy. Like, I felt like I was like, yo, I did. I was like, bro, this is not me. <laughs> then I was like, yo, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, let me stop this. Then I went right back to what I was doing. Then he was like, then I jumped like, it was like, it's crazy. I was like, bro, I really love this. I'm like, all right, let me date, let me make this happen. That's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of us, like, he knows how foolish we are. He knows how, like, we're just... We're like intelligent and dumb creatures at the same time. Yeah. You know, I say creatures a lot because I respect, I'm a vegan. I respect all animals and all that. And, you know, it's like killing things just hurts me. I like, I swear, I felt like I ran over a rabbit when I was like with driving my dad and my heart stopped. <laughs> and I like, this is how like deep it is my like, my love for like, you know, God's creatures because it's all God's creatures. And that's where I really should like, you know, yeah. It's hard. It's a battle, but you know, if you're if you align yourself with God, it's like mentally, spiritually, it's like you create a life that's based around God. And it's growing up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, like all of this is alignment, and it will take you to further places that you're trying to go, and that's where I truly see benefit all coming from you know like my desires flying with god and everything is good and you really know your purpose because a lot of people be like praying for it then but they don't receive because mm -hmm. their alignment is not nowhere to be found like you know what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. gonna take the time it's gonna take some time to really like it's gonna take some time to really align them but they're gonna have to go through lessons to really get them to where they need to be and understand but they need to go to the people that like need, need help like to make them understand yeah. So it's all just, it's all lessons to it. Yeah. Take it away, boss. I used to get so high like I seen Jesus in the sky. But it was really just to hide insecurities inside. Fitting like those guys was the thing I had desired. Just to get accepted, I would have to get disguised. And I was just a kid, I didn't know much at the time. Only thing I knew was I had to get their stop. Coming to America, I felt like I was blind. I was rocking sketches, then I seen these shoe designs. Gotta have that Nike check, only thing that made it right. So I made my mama drop 200 on the flights. Couple things that changed, so the people saying hi. Started with the shoes, then it really built the hype. Like, that's what I mean, cause like, you know, I make a whole bunch of things, but I know I didn't mention God in this, but God bless for everything. It's all for God. Like, I really make this cause I didn't feel accepted at the time. I was doing a whole bunch of things, mm -hmm. but I really know my place. I really know who God is. I really know what I'm here to do. And that's really what that matters to me now. Like that that's really what matters to me. I really don't care about what people's opinions are. Like I really like don't care what kind of image they portray to me. Like at the end of the day, I know who's painting a bigger picture. You know? He's really yeah. up there. He's like he's an artist, like he's an artist like a lot of people like deny giving him like yeah. glory. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's true. We just gotta make sure, like, we're really giving the glory to it. You know, yeah. trying to make it happen. That's God awesome. bless. And God loves you guys if you guys are watching. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, GMB Youth. Uh, we got my man Biz over here doing his thing. Yeah. Salute. Thank you for coming out. I'm a sinner.